subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. The extremely severe cyclonic storm Taute, that's how it's pronounced in Burmese, is battering India's west coast. The cyclone has made landfall and it has brought down rain and storm along multiple states and in fact there have already been casualties and a few individuals have died. This cyclone Taute is incidentally yet another example of what seems to be the changing trend of cyclones in the Arabian Sea where they seem to be increasing both in frequency as well as intensity. In this video, we'll take a look at cyclones, what the difference between the ones that come in the Bay of Bengal and the ones that come in the Arabian Sea are, why storms like Taute are an anomaly and what this all means. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Cyclone Taute originated in the Arabian Sea and was first observed by the Indian Med Department, IMD, on May the 13th and it was moving eastward. Subsequently, over the next couple of days, it moved eastward and then it moved north and it was intensifying the whole time. When we talk about storm intensification, what do we mean and how do we classify these intensified storms? Well, the IMD categorizes tropical storms into multiple categories. These are depression, deep depression, cyclonic storm, severe cyclonic storm, very severe cyclonic storm, extremely severe cyclonic storm and super cyclonic storm. Not very creative names, but these increase in intensity and an increase in intensity means an increase in wind speeds. Extremely severe cyclonic storms and super cyclonic storms have wind speeds of over 160 and 210 kilometers per hour respectively. A couple of days later, on May the 15th, the storm started to move along the coast of Karnataka and it began a very rapid intensification phase where it started to gain energy and increased wind speeds very quickly. Within just a few hours, it went very quickly into a very severe cyclonic storm and then became categorized into an extremely severe cyclonic storm. We've seen before in other videos about the formation of cyclones and hurricanes. Cyclones, hurricanes and typhoons, they're all the same thing. They're just called different in different parts of the world. Cyclones originate as tropical storms and tropical storms are those that form between the two tropics and these storms rotate in the anti-clockwise direction. When the temperatures are warm and the surface temperature of the ocean becomes warm, sometimes low pressure regions tend to form because of the heat. As the sun heats up the top layers of the waters, warm moist air over the ocean rises upward from the surface. As the humid air rises up, it leaves a bit of a void underneath into which cold air rushes in and fills it. So basically, as the warm air rises, it causes an area of low pressure below. So the surrounding cold air, which is actually at a higher pressure, fills in this gap. And then this cool air then becomes warm and moist and then it rises too and this entire convective cycle continues. As this entire convective process scales up under the right condition, it can quickly become a large cyclone. The Bay of Bengal is fed by a constant source of fresh water in the form of giant rivers like the Ganga and the Brahmaputra. This water that empties into the Bay of Bengal promptly warms the surface and rises up as moisture. This makes it difficult for this new warm layers of water to mix properly with the cooler layers of ocean water underneath. As a result, the surface always remains warm and is always ready to evaporate and is ready to potentially feed any cyclone. Because of the shape of the land around Bay of Bengal, the winds are slower and weaker over the ocean and they're always ready to spin into a cyclone. On the other hand, on the other side of the country, the northern, central and western parts of the Arabian Sea have a much cooler temperature as compared to adjacent waters. The mountains in East Africa they direct winds towards the Arabian Peninsula and what this does is that it dissipates heat more effectively over the ocean throughout the Arabian Sea. As a result, 
this region the arabian sea region is not particularly favorable to feed potential cyclones because the water is so much colder about half the cyclones that move into this area typically tend to lose energy and just dissipate however this year the sea surface temperatures continue to remain abnormally high in this area in fact imd has said that the sea surface temperatures remained at 30 to 31 degrees which is quite high and this continued to feed cyclonic conditions this cyclone was named taute in accordance with the list of the northern indian ocean tropical cyclone names which are nominated of course by the 13 countries that are affected in this region by the north indian ocean cyclones that is bangladesh india iran maldives myanmar oman pakistan qatar saudi arabia sri lanka thailand uae and yemen The name Taute, meaning a gecko or a lizard, was nominated by Myanmar. The next cyclone to be named will be called Yas from Oman, and the one after that will be Gulab from Pakistan, and Shaheen from Qatar, Jawad from Saudi Arabia, and Asani from Sri Lanka. Now, what is happening? with cyclones in the arabian sea and why are people getting concerned at their incidence the arabian sea and the bay of bengal are of course both a part of the indian ocean this extends on the west all along africa's coast and madagascar up to the arabian peninsula and the gulf of oman down to the north indian ocean below india at sri lanka all along the andaman sea and going all the way up to the australian coast West Indian Ocean normally sees a very small number of cyclones and tropical storms. Between the years of 1891 and 2000, about 308 cyclones occurred, including 103 severe cyclones, and this impacted the east coast of the country. So the Bay of Bengal saw over 300 storms, while only 48 tropical cyclones impacted the Arabian Sea, the west coast. out of which only 24 were severe cyclonic storms as compared to the over 100 at bay of bengal cyclones occur in the pre monsoon months of may and june and then also in the post monsoon months of october november among the cyclones that form in the waters of the bay of bengal over 58% approach the coast during the october november post monsoon season in this time period while 30% did so during the pre monsoon season On the other side over the Arabian Sea only about 25% of the cyclones that form approach the coast both during the pre and the post monsoon seasons however of late in the recent decades the average number of storms to occur over the Arabian Sea and the time of the year when they do have both demonstrated a changing trend in 2018 while the bay of bengal maintained its average of four cyclones a year The Arabian Sea actually saw 3 instead of its average of 1. A year later, the Arabian Sea saw 5 cyclones. Overall, there has been a 32% rise in the number of cyclones between the years of 2014 and 2019. The changing trends are consistent with rising temperatures in the Indian Ocean region. A 2014 study found that while the overall temperature of the indian ocean rose by 0.7 degrees celsius the generally cold and western indian ocean region experienced an anomalous warming of 1.2 degrees celsius in the summer additionally cyclones over the arabian sea are also increasing in intensity and this is driven by rising emissions and temperatures Typically an extremely severe cyclone occurs in the Arabian Sea once every 4 to 5 years. Between 1998 and 2013 only 5 extremely severe cyclones occurred in this part of the ocean. However, 2014 saw cyclone Nilofar and 2015 saw cyclones Chapal and Meg all of which also occurred in the October November season. The rising surface temperatures of the waters over at arabian sea is thought to be the leading factor in the increase in frequency and intensity of cyclones over the arabian sea experts have now started to call for increased monitoring of these waters for cyclones so as to ensure safety